John. Hello, Oliver. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about Dublin City. We're going to talk about the buildings, maybe a bit of the transport and how the city has progressed or regressed over the years um, in terms of architecture. I think Ireland, or sorry, Dublin is going down the wrong direction. Um, but let's hear what John Malone has to say. Yes, Dublin, Dublin in the rare old times, as the song goes, and Dublin Saunter, uh, that old person made famous. Uh, Dublin City, uh, you know, that song, uh, I'd, I'd be singing it maybe uh, the next time I'm talking about Dublin. Uh, yeah. I don't want to sort of waste too much time and perhaps give people headaches. Uh, uh, uh. So, uh, D- D- Dublin was 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 a, was a gra- lovely city, one of the most beautiful cities in Europe. Lovely architecture, uh, in 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 Marion Square and all the rest of it, and and parks and uh, all the rest of it, and uh, a lovely service. And uh, Connell Street was nearly a jewel. It was uh, one of the widest streets in Europe, and had tourists coming at the time when tourists were scarce coming from the United States particularly, because they had a few shillings in their pocket. They weren't uh, taxed to the hilt. And they were able to come here and they come in their droves. Because I saw it, we come across them in Boyle County where it's common. And they'd be waving at you. And uh, you'd be waving at them. Uh, they seemed to love the country, and they did. Uh, and uh, they were visiting all these famous tourist attractions that we have, were awash with tourist attractions. And Dublin was a great place to visit because of the lovely wide street and the water fountains in O'Connor Street and the flowers of O'Connor Bridge and all the people on bicycles. Uh, there was plenty of bicycles them times. So I was often going home for their dinner. I went home for my lunch. Myself, uh, I was walking in Dublin and I got lunch or something in some some neighbour that uh, my my parents knew in, in the North Strand and I cycled out there for my lunch. We had an hour and a half for lunch. So I was on the pig's bike. So Dublin was 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 a beautiful city, and it it was one that should have been kept along the lines that the people in charge inherited. But I'm afraid whatever was they were suffering from, uh, they didn't do that. O'Connor Street now has been more more things done in O'Connor Street not to uplift it. The media is partly responsible to newspapers because. Uh, Jefferson Smurfett, a very benign uh, company, paid a million pounds for to put in a fountain in O'Connor Street. And it was very, it was lovely. People used to sit there and it was a very peaceful place to be. And the flowers in O'Connor Bridge, and they kind of ridiculed it as these journalists seem to sort of suffer with some anxiety neurosis. And quite frankly, it did no right to do those things. And so, uh, so the the me the crowd that run the country, and they say I run the city, uh, seem to think that the newspapers report the truth, which there's something very strange. I don't think to do. They ridiculed something that was beautiful, and uh, they mustn't like beauty. And so, hence Dublin, uh, Connor Street now is not is not anything like it was. And uh, other parts of the city now, parts of the Keys has been improved. Charlie Hawley was in his Taoiseach. Uh, he always was uh, he was always open to some good suggestion suggestions. I think Barry Desmond, a financier and a friend of his, suggested where there was a derelict site in the docks, a nice or uh, to maybe build something there, a financial centre. And Charlie jumped at that. This is why you have this financial centre in Dublin, a jewel. I think you mean. I think you mean, I think you mean Dennis Desmond, or was it was it Barry Desmond? Is that what you said? Did I say not at all? It was Dermot Desmond? Dermot Desmond. Say? Yes, he said Barry. Isn't. Did he? Well, it must have been the least. Must have been. Must be <laughs> not to worry, any. Oh, yes, go ahead. Dermot Desmond. Yeah, well, there's a lot of Desmonds, and uh, anyways, uh, Dermot. He, he was a friend of Charlie, and uh, so he was able. Charlie would listen to him. And Charlie did what he suggested. It was a marvellous thing to do. Look what he did. And uh, it, it didn't cost the taxpayers anything and this, that and the other. Great thing to do. But you Charlie know the, did a lot for this city. The, the thing about it is, look, um, you mentioned O'Connell Street there. It's O'Connell Street. The problem with O'Connell Street is they put the spike, the spike or the spire, whatever you want to call it, should be down in the docks. Or a modern development. Nice show. It'd be lovely to have the spire out by the ocean. We're only two kilometers less 
from the ocean from O'Connell Bridge, you know. And it'd be nice to have it out there somewhere and have a, a kind of a, a tourist attraction area. What's good about O'Connell Street is that Cleary's has got a complete re um, renovation. It's almost finished, ready to open. Um, it'll be open. So that'll, that'll really bring a lot of attractions to the street. There's a police station yeah, yeah. open now. So yeah. things are... I things are well, that's good from that point of view. But it's from the wide thoroughfare it was. It's a pity that... Uh, things were done to it that has not it hasn't got the beauty that it had and um the catholic priests in the dublin one area have, have indicated that it's a, a difficult area at the present time with a lot of crime so these are unfortunate uh events that occur in our society nowadays and uh but D dublin still has a lot of beauty and um you have the lift you running through it used to be very smelly one time but i don't think it's as smelly as it was uh, depending on what time the way the tide was, you'd have to hold your nose as you went over. But these are matters sometimes that happen in cities uh, when when the authorities maybe haven't got the funds to do what needs to be done. And maybe they've done that over the years. So it's definitely you don't get a smell from the Liffey. So that's a plus factor. And there's a lot of other good things, I suppose, that happen. We have, we have a transport system now. They got rid of what was there, which was good. Uh, but they're right to keep the tram and hose and things like that as a tourist attraction. Because other countries have the, the trams still in operation, San Francisco and all the rest of it. So, uh, but however, we, 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 it's our capital city, uh, so we have to support it. Uh, it's a pity it's so expensive and so difficult to get around, but the public transport, of course, is a gift. They have their buses, have their own bus lanes. So it's the handiest way to get into the city is by bus. Believe it or not, if you if you're walking in the city, but if you're walking in the suburbs, you're on the pig's back, aren't you? Mm -hmm. And you mentioned there about the uh, the train service. You know, there's a train service now that goes from goes all the way up into Fibsborough, and that actual line, that train line, was I think the last time that was it ceased to exist. I think under Todd Andrews in, in 1946. Uh, but that's open yeah, now. Yeah. That's that's now the Lewis line. No, so, we we had our freedom, and instead, you see, all these were built under the British. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to afford to do all the work uh, by way of all the railways and the expense of all the rest of it. And they also, of course, built the canals um, to sort of make money. So all these amenities that we have, the canals, were already paid for by the invader. And uh, at least that was good. And the railways was actually great for the people of the country. It was a great thing to do. And they have to, we have to thank them for that. That was one good thing that they did, although they did a little bit of bad things. But nonetheless, we talk about the good, the positive. Isn't that the way to look at life? That is the way to look at life. And uh, look, I, I I hope they can come up with some better system for the transport in, in Dublin City because what's happening at the moment, um, it's when you, whether you go in the bicycle, where you're walking, or whether you're um, driving in a car, whatever you, way you go into the city, if you go into College Green, you just, there's so much garbage on the street in terms of road signs and um, these little dividers that divide up the cycle paths from the motor paths or from the train paths. It's just, it's chaotic looking. It's it's ridiculous. But I wouldn't drive a car in Dublin now, which I did for years, and uh, park near O'Connor Street and all the rest of it. Uh, you couldn't do things like that now, uh, perhaps with the amount of cars, because there's more cars now when people have cars that do, heretofore didn't, you know, were looking to have a bicycle. And a bicycle with a, with a dynamo and a three-speed gear that were, that were up the market. Uh, <laughs> most of us just had a bicycle and uh, you would put a lamp on it. You could afford a lamp, uh, that type of thing. So uh, things have improved, but uh, also then um, obstacles are put in people's ways uh, uh, probably for safety, I suppose we we'd have to look at the positive, don't we? Uh, but we would like if they would uh, uh, sort of respect people that have cars and stop interfering with their freedom. I think, uh, so, you know, they don't abuse their freedom uh, by and large, and it's very difficult parking in Dublin because there's parking zones, and and if you're a bit over the time, suddenly your car is clamped. So there's no encouragement to be uh, having a car in Dublin that I can see because. First of all, you can't go into the city and you have difficulty in the suburbs going around because it seems to be nothing but traffic. You're, you're held up no matter where you go, where you go in the middle of the night when there's nobody there. Pretty the shops, some of them aren't open in the middle of the night because you've got shopping cover, perhaps. Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much, Albert.